welcome back to another uh, voiceover, if that's what we're going to call it. Um, so basically I wanted to run through what I'm doing over the next month, or roughly the next month. Um, this is my Training Peaks account, uh, so I'm not going to not gonna hide anything from you, even though there's not much information on there at the minute, because we've literally just started, um, just started back training. Um, I think uh, few, there's a few things I think you might be able to take away from this um, that you can apply to your own training if you're uh, getting back into training or if you're just starting training for the first time, particularly in the winter. Um, I think a lot of riders tend to get back into that structure in December. So uh, yeah, this, this, may, um, this may answer a few questions that you have, but if they don't, then let me know down in the comment section and I will clear some of them up for you. Um, by the way, thank you very much for um, the, uh, the messages and the comments from the video that we released regarding next year. Uh, it's great to see so many of you behind it. Uh, you know I'm 100% in it, so like focused on it. So yeah, it's great that we could do something together like this again for another year. So anyway, Onto this, um, I'm thinking of maybe doing like one of these every month or a couple of months just to kind of give you uh, a deeper insight into what I do because even though like I try to show you as much as possible when I'm actually out on the road, um, sometimes you can get kind of lost in it all because you know it's it because it's day to day, um, you know you can't really piece it all together. Whereas this kind of shows you a big overview. So um, I'll just yeah I'll just run you through it. So here we have, like, this is my first week. Um, this is my first week right here. Uh, back uh, of structured training. Now it all depends, like, what um, what you've done in your off-season, whether or not you've had, like, a full break off the bike or whether you've been active and you've ridden and you've, you know, kept that kind of machine ticking over. Uh, this will all depend on how, how quick you can kind of get back into you know, structure and depending on how many hours you can do as well. So for me, I've done quite a bit. So here's the last kind of four weeks. Uh, forgive all the red because I don't really fill it in. I don't really like tick the boxes and fill the time in, even though for the majority of the time I've done it, um, I just forget to tick the box. Um, so we'll go back to um, the British Hill Climb. So here we go, right there on the 27th. So it's just over a month ago. Um, and we were doing like 10 hours a week, 8 hours a week uh, in the build up to that, uh, lots of high intensity stuff um, and I can prove that to you by going up here, um, this was actually from the 23rd of September until the British Hill Climb Champs, this was what my training um, spread looked like, so I was doing a lot of time in uh, zone 6 and zone 5. And yes, okay, there was time in zone three and zone four, but not a lot. Um, there's quite, you know, those bars there are quite raised, so I did quite a lot of time there. And then zone one to recover. So um, you can change these. Uh, I tend to have them at um, the last, or this month, or the last 14 days, or last 28 days. Gives you a kind of idea of where you've been at the last, yeah, the last period to show you where you've been sat in terms of training. We'll come back to that page in a minute, but at the minute, um, because I've been fairly consistent in riding over the off season, I haven't like completely taken time off the bike. As you can see, I've done like uh, 10 hours, 15 and a half because of that 300k Audax. <laughs> that was funny. Um, six and a half hours, 12 hours last week and yeah, this week we're already on eight hours nearly, um, which is good. I'm not really taking, for this next month, I'm not really taking any notice of training stress score. Um, I'm basically focusing just on hours and letting the training stress score take care of itself. Um, now, obviously, if my training was hard, then the, the training stress score would be a lot higher anyway. Uh, but because we're kind of um, more focused on the hours, um, then I'm not too bothered about hitting um, high TSS numbers. And if anything, when the hours increase, um, even if we're already in zone one, zone two, which would be the majority of the time, because that's just general conditioning, 
uh, and because you can't actually train a lot of the time in the upper zones anyway, there's only so much you can do, um, then you know that TSS will gradually climb anyway. Um, and this is only because I have time this month to do this. Now, generally, I wouldn't do you know a, a bag full of hours, but uh, it's only because I have the time. You can 100% get very similar results just by doing you know uh, less than 15 hours a week less than 13 hours a week of high intensity structured training. I do it an awful lot with the people that I coach and help out um, because you know they work and they have busy lives as well. So they can't necessarily you know do you know big hour weeks. Um, but you know you could argue that, that those extra hours are filler hours and you know you, you don't have to do them. And I think I proved last winter that you could get by on a pretty high intensity winter and not suffer too much you know you can always add that kind of endurance on when you want to uh, when the weather gets better when the hours uh, when the daylight hours get um, get longer so we'll take a look at this week it's pretty general I've had an FTP test here uh, a Zwift race there Wednesday just a zone 2 ride uh, to Cardiff you can jump straight into this and you can see the majority of it was in zone 2 70% uh, very low power curve today's ride uh, I included eight 20 second all out efforts. I know it says 200% of FTP, but they were pretty much sprints. And then around about five minutes of recovery. Uh, and we can see you know, I spent a lot of time in zone two again. And there's my kind of almost two minutes at zone six uh, doing my sprints. And you can see my sprints <laughs> just almost edging out 800 watts, but not quite. Uh, pretty poor, actually. Um, so, yeah. That's uh, that's this week. Tomorrow I'm riding home, so I rode to Cardiff here, riding home from Cardiff here, and then uh, we're doing the structured ride uh, session on Saturday, run by Business Cycling Club, and then just general riding around that. But that will conclude the first week, which I aim to have 14 hours. Now, the following week, I'm um, as you can see, I'm working in kind of blocks, so I'm having like a rest day. And then another block, so we've got this here. Now, I've, I haven't actually filled in any intervals yet. I've just kind of filled in the hours and where I think I, I can fit them. Um, this is like the first step, generally, is, is seeing where and when you can fit these sessions in. And then you can add, you know, whatever you deem fit, like the, the intervals themselves, to those sessions. So I've got this so far. I know I'm going to be riding the Cardiff again, so I've put this here. And I know I'm going to be riding back again, so I've put this here. So those are kind of like my... Um, bread and butter workouts because I know I have to do them uh, in order to get to Cardiff and back um, and then uh, we're going to have another kind of bigger endurance ride on the Saturday but that if anything is not going to be high intensity at all it's just going to be literally backing up what we've done for the whole week and just kind of finishing off that block then we're going to take a rest day because that'll be a 16 and a half hour week right there and then uh, then we're into a 24-hour week. And then we've got a rest week right here. <sighs> Charlie's sending me messages over here. She wants me to pick up a, a file uh, from a stationery shop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and do it later. Don't worry. Don't worry. So then the 24-hour week right here. Uh, again, 1,000 TSS. This one was 750. Now, they're accumulating because the hours have increased. It's a fairly big jump between 16 and a half and 24, but that's what I want it to be. I'd rather spend less time faffing around during 24 hours than actually um, than actually building kind of gradually. I, I want to jump and then come back down very quickly, and hence why I'm doing a 13-hour week here so that I can recover very quickly from this one. Um, otherwise, I would be kind of constantly overreaching on a very large scale you know you can overreach for seven days and not kind of feel it too much at least in my experience and uh, and then come down very quickly after it but if you try to overreach too much so if I say went you know maybe 17 hours this week 22 hours this week and then 24 this week you know that overreach is almost doubled um, so I try not to do that and I try to kind of make that step um, as short a step as possible um, so I'm not as fatigued as much so then this week the 24 week I'm working in two three day blocks um, and they're quite big uh, there's one double day and we have our staple ride again here now again I haven't put in the efforts or the intervals yet but when you kind of work on the basis of the hours it makes it a little bit easier to start with 
Now, uh, one important thing I would like to say, and I think a lot of you can implement this to your structure and your training as well, is don't work in weeks. Even though I'm talking about weeks, and I hate the fact that Training Peaks is kind of laid out in weeks, but I guess that's the way the world works and that's the way calendars work, so I'm not going to argue against it, but... When you start working in 24 hour blocks, you realize that your training changes completely, your, your recovery changes completely. So a big uh, a big example right here is that I, I did this right here yesterday at 3 p.m. I finished at around 6.15 p.m. And then today I got on the bike at 8 a.m. and I finished at like, you know, half 10. So in theory, I've done a five and a half hour ride and 210 TSS in 24 hours so just like doing a general you know five and a half hour ride in one day so that's a way to think about it there now from here to here i will have 24 hours of recovery and then from here to here i'll have another 24 hours so you're kind of back in that cycle but if you can make the most of sessions whereby you stack them like that then they work really well now if we go back another step this session is actually at 7 p.m so you're looking at a 7 p.m. session and a 3 p.m. session. And I finished at 6. So in theory, I've done another hour there. So that, those combined, is 4 hours in 24. So you can see, you can see where I'm getting that, hopefully. Um, but it just gives you something to think about. You know, if, if you do start feeling rough, like say if I feel rough this afternoon, well, there's a reason for that. I've done 5.5 hours in the last 24. Um, or you could think of it as, oh, I've only done two and a half hours today. Why am I feeling so rough? So hopefully that gives you a little bit of um, clarity on that. But um, yeah, I mean, that's the calendar. And then if I look at my dashboard, uh, you can see that on the performance management chart, I planned out for the next, well, basically till the end of January. Now, I don't usually do this, but I've only done it just so that I can see roughly where I could potentially go. With a lot of people that I coach, I tend to say, you know, you only look, say, maybe a month in advance because the big picture matters more than anything else, unless, I would say, they're two weeks or well, two weeks out from, like, their, their biggest competition or their A event or whatever. Um, but for me, through this, I've kind of scheduled the whole winter just so I could see roughly where I could potentially go if everything went perfectly. You know, obviously things aren't going to go perfectly, so um, there will be tweaks along the way, and I'll have to change sessions, and there'll be ice, and there'll be snow, and there'll be goodness knows what. There'll be drops in motivation because that always happens. But you can see roughly. So the red dots are at TSS. So these are these are rides. So the bigger the ride, the higher the red dot is on this graph. So there's the old a few weeks ago. And you can see from uh, from this that here is where we are at right now. And there's red dots kind of here, here, here. You know, they're quite kind of low, but they're consistently low down here. And then as we start working our way up here, the red dots, they remain consistent and close to each other. But they're very kind of close in this area. So they start to increase and get higher. And there's... A good distribution of red dots right down here which are which are complete rest days like no riding so i'm not kind of sacrificing rest days for intent for kind of overall training stress score like i'm not going you know a load of days or a long period without the rest day and that's kind of important the balance of it is quite important so that's about it really uh i can't really speak to anything else because there's not much else on here uh, unless of course you know I've missed something and you know you can drop a message down below but this is another handy little graph this is duration by week which I've kind of this is the week we're on now and this is where we are the blue if the blue fills to here then that means we've completed it properly so this is the kind of idea like bang 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 and then that takes us to the end of January so we'll see how it works out uh, but I've literally only dived into into the next month to take us up to basically Christmas. So let me know if you have any queries, questions, and uh, I'll get back to you. And I hope that offered some kind of, I don't know, interesting insight. Uh, and I hope I haven't wasted 15 minutes of your day. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.